This is what I call the exposure clock, and I do hope that I'm not labouring the point a little bit too much here with exposure. But it is a vital subject, and this video is quite short. So let's say with my exposure clock that 12 o'clock midday represents the camera's exposure. We know in most cases we're going to get a reasonable result if we expose at the midday point. We also know that if we stray into some underexposure, whether that's by accident or design, as long as we're within a certain range, let's say between 5 to 12 and 12 o'clock, we're going to be able to recover in camera raw or Lightroom if we're shooting a raw file, of course. And the same goes for a degree of overexposure too, as long as it's within certain limits. And of course, if we think about exposing to the right, some of this is going to be more by design perhaps than by accident. But we're all human, we're all sometimes faced with situations where we have to shoot quickly, so we're often going to be between these two parameters, 5 two to 5 past 12. And I think most people could accept this as the exposure latitude. So as long as we're shooting between that range, we're going to be fine. Albeit, in certain circumstances, we would like our big hand to be exactly where we want it, thinking of exposing to the right again. So if we use the histogram and the blinkies, which we can reveal on the back of the camera on the LCD screen, we can quite often find that sweet spot which gives us the very best quality and ease of image manipulation. So at the bare minimum we want to achieve an exposure between those two points, 5 2 and 5 past 12, but if possible we want to get closer than that. If we stop and think for a minute and ask ourselves, well, what circumstances would cause us to maybe slip outside of our exposure latitude? And I would suggest in almost all cases, it's going to be contrast. Let me suggest a scenario where we could start to have problems. Maybe we're shooting in the city. It's a bright sunny day. The buildings are casting deep shadows. In front of the building, we've got very light paving stones which are throwing back the light. The gap between the highlights and the shadows now become a little too great for us to capture. In addition to that, as we tilt our camera down a little bit to frame up our shot, there's far more highlight in the shot than there is shadows. The camera sees the highlight, decides it needs far less exposure. So those shadows, rather than being just dark, they are completely black, lacking in all detail. And the same thing can happen in reverse. We take another shot, and this time there's an awful lot of dark shadow in the shot, which overly influences the light meter, telling the camera it needs a lot more exposure than it actually does. Now perhaps the overexposure could drift to a degree where if it doesn't destroy the quality of the picture completely, it could certainly make the image editing a lot more difficult for us. And depending on our skill level with our image editor, it could possibly take us past the point where we can easily recover. And of course we can very easily drift into serious underexposure especially where the highlights fool the light meter into giving less exposure than we really need. And once again, we've got impact on our image quality, and certainly it's going to be a lot more difficult in the image editor. Now the circumstances I'm describing here between slipping into underexposure at 10 to 12 and overexposure at 10 past is not an uncommon thing, particularly when we're having to cope with very high contrast. The high contrast we're talking about here, if we're outdoors, 
is going to be generated primarily by the sun but it's also affected by the images that we frame up on because the reflected surfaces within the image are going to sometimes make that contrast a lot worse if we go down to the beach on a bright sunny day we don't tend to have a great deal of problem with overly contrasty images because the light hits the sand and the sand works like a giant reflector it's in these high contrast situations where if we're not careful and we keep our eye firmly on the exposure we're giving it's quite easy to slip a little bit further one way or the other and now we're really into either critical underexposure or critical overexposure and in both of these situations you're going to be hard pressed to produce a decent picture at all all the time I'm shooting images I'm trying to make sure that I'm within my exposure latitude sometimes I do have to swing one way or the other more often than not it's exposing to the right and of course the one thing to remember with all of these skills and techniques is the more we do them the more proficient we become until you do reach a stage where they're just second nature